webinar in the series uh, we've done on safety. Uh, this one's going to be on the products. Um, my name's Ruben, and this is my colleague, Ricky. Um, thank you for joining us again. This is our last one in the series. And uh, we're going to move straight on to the Safety Edge products. So what we've got, um, firstly, this is the click line edge. Uh, primarily, we use this on the swing gates. This is a 42 mil edge um, profile, and then the aluminium backing is a 30 mil. So, swing gates, and this one is also what we recommend for the barriers. Um, if you're not using the X guards or other safety devices, on the 230 volt barriers on the B614 and our B680, uh, they have encoder technology, so they reverse on contact and the edges are not needed in most cases. The next one that we have is the cover line. Um, the cover line unit, we have the new style, when I say new style, we've been proceeding now, but um, which is a 67 mil, um, and that's available on an angled platform. Uh, and then we also have that a version available in the 80 mil, and these predominantly would be for the sliding gates, as we've seen before on the pads. And then just moving on to the new range of profile, which will be, sorry, sorry. Um, actually just take a look at this. It does give the reaction times and everything regarding those um, cover line, click line, and the S line. Um, on the S line, there's an 8 mil and a 12 mil, and these are predominantly for your hinge points um, on the swing gate. And we just move on, and we're going on to the new expert line. So, with the uh, cover line, click line, S line, these are ones that are pre made. So, they're made by us, and they're in certain lengths, and then they're made bespoke on order. Um, we have a calculator for the, those um, lines on the swing gates, which is available on request. With the new expert line, these are actually made on site or in your offices, but they're made by yourselves. So they come in 2.5 meter kits or in 25 meter rolls. Um, the edges that are available, again, we have a 49 mil, 74 and a 99 so the 49 again would be more for your swing gates um the 74 and the 99 would be for sliding <laughs> gates <laughs> be for okay you can actually with these as well if you've got existing cover lines and you're replacing you can use the expert line as a retrofit to go on those existing bases um, those bases, I think it's 45 mil, isn't it, on the... Uh, yes. Uh, over the 30 mil on the cover line. Yeah, they are. For, uh, you can... Uh, oh, what, the actual aluminium profile at the bottom? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the same one as was used on the original cover lines. Yeah, okay. So all the way back to the first cover lines, you can still just do a straight, uh, straight swap onto yep. it. Brilliant. And these, um, again, we have the kits available in the 2.5 meter and on the 25 meter roll, it's a shopping list, so you're looking at, it's much more diverse, so you've got different lengths of cable, um, and so really for whichever application you're using it, you create it on site. Uh, it has a movable, tra uh, movable resistor yep. as well. So yeah, you've got it two wire or resistive and you build it as you're doing your project. So it is very convenient. And it's actually simple to make. We yeah, have yeah, a, yeah. Um, it's simple to put together. Ruben has done a video. Go on, yeah. Ruben, just tell me. Uh, it's very easy. You basically take the profile, put the two end pieces, go in. And once you've got the end pieces, you just get left with a little small cable. And essentially, it's whatever you put on the end of this cable defines what type of edge it is. Yeah. So you can be on site and you can just change it around from being a resistor to be a through edge. Or by just changing a couple of cables and that's it. There's no cutting of cables or anything like that, you just unscrew them, take them apart and put them back together get the way you want them to be. So it makes life much, much easier for the engineer on site. So that video will be available on our news page. Yeah. Um, just so you can do it along with this presentation. And um, for any details, further details, just uh, give myself, if I'm your regional manager or any of the regional managers a call, and also the sales, internal sales, uh, details are available. 
Okay. Um, well, just one more thing on those. The reaction time on yes. the expert line is actually superior to the previous. Yes, uh, it's only three millimeter uh, yep. for response time and only 45 newtons of force required to trigger it. So it's extremely sensitive. Yep. And you have much better response times. Okay. All those details are in this presentation. So the ones we were talking about previous, the cover, click, and the S line, and the expert line reaction times. Okay. Move to the next one. Uh, essentially, one of the bits we get uh, asked quite often is CAT2 or CAT3. Uh, what's the difference? Yep. Uh, essentially, CAT2 is a test that's undertaken by the control board of its safety devices that are attached to it. So it will essentially do that test before the gate moves. It drops circuits, they go away, and then it expects them to come back within a certain amount of time. If they don't go away, and come back, then it has a short circuit. If it go away, it don't go back quick enough, again, assume that there might be a fault where there's something that's wrong uh, with the system. This, this test typically happens within 100 milliseconds. It'd be the kind of thing that initially you might see that little quick blink as it happens on the board. And <coughs> three, on the other hand, is a safety device on this hand is checking itself continuously. So it's always basically going around, checking, are we okay, are we okay, are we okay, are we okay? Are we okay? It does that all the time. Uh, but there is no check from the controller back to the main uh, gate controller itself. If there's yeah. nothing happening on that. Um, obviously, CAT2, as I said, does it at the beginning. CAT3 does it continuously. Um, so it's a, it, there are pros and cons to both type of systems. Um, if you're going to use a CAT3 controller, then the only thing to make sure is that the cable that links the outputs from the controller to the gate control board yeah. Uh, be as short as possible, and probably like an armored style cable, something along those lines, because that is a weak point, because if anything happens to the cable, the controller could be saying there's something happening, and the control board has no idea. It will just carry on through its cycle, regardless. Okay. Uh, the next bit along that we've got on here is the uh, wireless system. So if you want to cover that one. Yep. Um, so we have two wireless products available. Um, this is the N wireless and available in the N wireless kit. So, really, what you've got with the differences between the, the FAC wireless um, and the N wireless, the range on the N wireless is up to 100 meter yes. rating and battery life um, up to 10 years. And we've actually Bit. We've got the original ones here yes. that we have as a prototype of seven uh, years old. Seven years old still. So your batteries are still going on. So yeah, we've kind of got proof of it. <laughs> yeah. And then moving on to the actual FAC version. So these are rated at 20 meters. Yeah. And then we've got a battery life on those. Uh, they're only really about one to two years because the, uh, the FAC uh, branded ones that use standard Duracell batteries. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, supermarket type batteries. Uh, they're only rated for about say one to two years. We recommend ideally in the yearly maintenance service at least you replace the batteries. So yeah, with an advantage, they're both eight six eight uh, frequency. With the um, N wireless, that does have a range, doesn't it? Yeah. So you can modify that range, which yeah. makes it kind of slightly more robust, I would say, yes, it has um, a in those greater, environments. Yeah, it's, it has a greater frequency agility for. Than it does over the um, other one where it's obviously fixed. The yeah, of course. And the advantage of the FAC one is the bus. Yes. So it's available on the bus technology and it go on the bus line. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next one along is the CN60. Now, just for, before we start, so it's, we're going into the controls now. Is the CN60 or the controller? It gives you your category. It's nothing yes. to do with the edges. The, no, the edges don't do anything. They of themselves is essentially the actual controllers that are either Cat two or Cat three. Oh, I did forget to mention as well. We do also sell a Cat three wireless uh, <laughs> system. So unlike my second webinar where I said that uh, we don't do uh, a Cat three, we're actually uh, in the system. process of testing it. So we'll uh, be available. We're testing it. Uh, apparently, it does work. Um, but yeah, so we do. There is, there are cat free wireless systems available. So it's just we haven't finalised how we're going to be doing it, uh, how we're going to be selling it. But uh, yes, there are cat free wireless systems available. So I apologise for my mistake in the second webinar there. Was it a mistake? 
fucking knowledge. It's fine. <laughs> um, so we're moving on. Just to, this is our probably most frequent bought yes. product. is a CN60. It's a standard controller. It's category two. Um, you can have up to eight edges on this unit. Yeah. Um, That's uh, four in uh, parallel yeah. with another two edges in series with each one of those four. Yeah, okay, understood. Um, you need one for each direction. So you have one for opening yes. and one for closing. Yeah. It's just got that one output. And then we move on to the Intra 6. Oh, one last little thing oh. is on the CN60. Uh, it's very easy to wire up. And there are three load diff switches, so it's virtually impossible to get wrong because the ledger is on the actual controller itself. Uh, so you really shouldn't have any issue. Just make sure you have the right dips uh, selected. So if you are fit in CN60, please check you've got the right dip switch selection on there. Uh, just count the number of Yeah. <laughs> and then moving on to the Intra 6. six. Yep. Uh, this is the Intra 6. Uh, it is essentially a safety edge controller as well. It looks like the Pro, uh, pro Loop that we do as well. Yeah, so it's got uh, a DIN rail mount. Yes. It's got the DIN rail mount. Um, and it's normally supplied with a transmission kit that you can see on there. Uh, if we go on to the next slide, it'll be a bit easier. Uh, the transmission kit will basically give you a steel cable that stretches across the entirety of the gate. You have a coil at one end, coil at the other side, where the edges get connected to. Yep. And then your portal edges, so the edges around where the gate travels through, they get wired directly to the CN60 on there. Uh, the main thing I uh, sorry, with the... Uh, yeah. With the Intra 6, uh, the only thing I would say uh, with the transmission kit is please make sure uh, that the brackets that are attached to the gates have a really good metal to metal contact because it uses the rest of the gates to complete its circuit uh, on the induction. Otherwise, it won't work properly. And this is available in Category 2 and Category yes. 3. Category 2 and Category 3. So it's for old sliding gate systems that don't have the Category 2 fail safe function. You can yep. use the, um, the Intra 6. Cat free version, and it's also the same for the when we use it on a swing gate, um, where obviously you disable the function when it looks for the mobile edges, yeah, and you're only looking at the should be the portal edges. Uh, again, it's when you've got a really old control board, so you might have a like a 410 MPS, uh, which, if I remember rightly, doesn't have a failsafe uh, capability because it's a really old board, um, but it has opening safety and closing safety, yeah. You can still add current safety edge, resistive edge to it, make the system safe by using the cat free version instead. Okay. Uh, so that's where it has its benefits on there. And the next one along we're looking at is the X Guard. X Guard's good. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got this is the horizontal version. They look identical. So we've got three versions available. There's the horizontal, which is a 10 meter, 10 by 10 meter. Uh, laser curtain, or laser carpet really when you yeah. look at it at the barrel on the horizontal. Um, and then we have the vertical, so we have a 5 meter, 5 by 5, and there's a 10 meter yeah. by 10. And that's the, the verticals predominantly you'd use on the sliding gates. Yeah, sliding They're gates. available for the swing, yeah. um, but it's more complicated on the swing. Uh, well, you per need say, four of them pretty much. Uh, yeah, you need four of them. That's when it obviously starts getting a bit different uh, onto it. Uh, but they work based on the same concept. Yeah. They're um, really effective on a sliding gate because uh, it means you don't have to put the uh, mesh on the bars, you don't have to put like uh, enclose the rear of the gate. And, uh, but you can't really the... get to the gate to even force test, can you? So uh, not exactly. Those... So if people look on the slide that's just on the screen at the moment, the one in the middle at the top shows us where we've been used in a sliding configuration. Yep. And the two below, they're the ones that get where it gets used on a barrier. Yeah, and with the the with the, the barrier side of it as well, it's not just a safety device, is it? No. So, um, where traditionally you would have loops, um, induction loops for exit, this will do all of that. So, it looks for a 1.2 meter range on an, as an exit device, um, as you can see on the images. There is a video of this available as well online. Um, and it covers all the safety. So, when you're using this unit, there's no need for photo cells or loops. Or no. any safety edges on the beam. Uh, no, the, the, we whether can't get to it. Exactly, and whether that's a 230 volt older barrier, yeah, or tr the newer 
24 volt with encoders. It does essentially cover everything that you need to do. Uh, exactly, it's much easier to use. Uh, so if you if we go along, you can see that there are examples of uh, what the kind of testing would be done. Yeah. The only time you need to really have a think is, um, we'll see it later on, Good is the, um, like with top and bottom skirts, uh, you're gonna need essentially two of them, uh, like either side to sandwich the top and bottom skirts. Yeah. Uh, in between them to also give you the safety on that aspect as we a slight different layout. Uh, the other thing that we also supply you is a pulse tester. Uh, we obviously sell you the Microtronics uh, Blue Force uh, tester uh, that gets used um, as we uh, showed you in the second webinar with the software. Uh, the standard kit will come with the um, like all the extension pieces come along. Uh, the one thing that doesn't come and usually um, an installer would make by themselves is the angled plate and the extra long extension uh, to your yeah. barriers. When you're doing a barrier safety check, if you're not using a laser curtain, because if you are, uh, if you're not using the lasers like the X-Cars, uh, then you either use our uh, like barriers that have built-in obstacle protection, like our B614, B680, and magnetics. You yep. still need to do the force test to make sure it does pass uh, on there, uh, or you'd have to fit a safety edge, like you would okay. do on the 640s and the 640s. Uh, they would require the use of the safety edge if you're not using a laser, and you should still carry out that test afterwards with the force test. Okay. Just on that force test, sir, we look out for um, a promotion that we're going to do on it in December with a special offer on those force testers okay. following on from these uh, webinars. And the, as you can see on the slide, um, these are the test objects that you'd use when you are testing a laser curtain. Uh, essentially, it's uh, people that have done more door automation that recognize the box on the left. It's a uh, 200 by 300 by 700 mil wide box. It has two different colors on it. You can get that um, made by yourself. Uh, I have one I keep in the back of the car. Uh, very useful because I deal with yeah. a lot of my doors. Um, and it's just, it's just a metal box, I keep a lot of tools inside and I should just take them out and use the box on its end and use it for the test function. And obviously the one that is more specific for uh, the swing gates and the sliding gates and the barriers is the rod that's on the right. It's essentially designed to represent an arm. And you can, if we go into the next slide. This is just, a, this is a duplication of what we've done in our yes. previous yeah. um, webinar. So, so you can see the more detail there. Positions. It's better just clarifying what we have <coughs> done before on it. Yep. Um, so we just keep going through it, and obviously that's on a like swing gate. Uh, if we go on again, we have the one on the barrier. So that's the one where it's got to go beyond the edge of the barrier, so it goes under it. It should be an arm's reach. Yep. Uh, across. Uh, so essentially, the laser picks you up for the safety field uh, before you get close to it. And as you see in the in the next slide is the one where the gate is being sandwiched. That's normally we have a combination of verticals. Yep. We have essentially sandwich either side of the gate up to two and a half meters uh, because obviously you've got a skirt on there. And with the barrier on the barrier laser, we have a video of that available yes, online yeah. that you've done a couple of months ago. And we are going to be doing one for we're going vertical to do exactly lasers on the sliding gates. On the sliding gates, gates and the swing gates as well. So obviously people can see um, how easy it is to actually set up a XR laser, uh, it kind of thing that uh, on average you're looking at probably an hour to install an XR. Well, uh, I mean, once you've done a couple. Yeah, as soon as we've done the video, that'll be promoted uh, through the market. Yeah. And I think that's it. That's it. Brilliant. So hopefully, obviously, you haven't got any questions. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. thank, thank you, you so much for joining us. Yeah. Anybody? Get a chat.